Hello and welcome to this lesson in the OCR GCSE Computer Science series looking at uh, Unit 1 Computer Systems and in particular the memory and storage section focused on data storage and units of data storage. Before we start, there are three quickfire questions on your screen to have a think about. Now you're not going to know the answer to many of those but I would like you to make an educated guess. What is in that picture? how much can be stored in the thing that we're seeing in that picture, and then a bit of an explanation of how you work that out. As I said, this is lesson nine of the memory and storage section of the OCR GCSE Computer Science Unit 1 uh, computer systems topic. Where does that sit within the bigger picture? Well, Unit 1 is made up of six key topics, systems architecture, memory and storage, computer networks, network security, system software, and then the impact of technology. This lesson sits within memory and storage and is what I call lesson nine, units of data storage. Within this lesson, you're going to learn how binary uh, is needed or how binary is used to represent data within a computer system, as well as the six key units of measurement that may come up in your exam. From there, we'll build up your ability to, to know those things, to be able to use those in exam type questions, including some more evaluative and explanation type questions. Before we start, uh, there are three questions that you should know the answer to if you've watched the rest of these lessons in this series. Number one, what is binary? Why is it needed? And then how is the letter A on the keyboard processed into binary code? Now, if you're not sure on any of those answers, you may want to go back and have a look at some of the lessons looking at the von Neumann architecture uh, and how that is used to represent, transmit and store data. So what do we mean when we talk about units of measurement? Units of measurement are the way of measuring the amount of data different storage devices can store. You will have heard the term kilobyte and megabyte, but what does that actually mean? Well, computers are electronic devices, therefore they just understand basic uh, states on and off. Is a light switch on? Is it not? A modern CPU, how is not really like a light bulb it's like a million or billion light switches connected together in series each one of those can be on or off now if we spend hours creating a computer program we obviously want to be able to store that at the end my programming is me going and switching on and off the relevant light bulbs me clicking file save as is then saving that state saving that program into our memory when you type a word or letter into the keyboard, you're sending a series of ones and zeros down that cable or wireless uh, connection into the computer. Those things are then processed by the CPU and again stored. When I type a word into Microsoft Word, thousands of binary bits are flying down the cable to make that happen. Now when we talk about our modern CPU being like a range of different light switches, we're actually talking about transistors within the microprocessor. Processors are made up of millions and billions of mini transistors. And those transistors are actually what we mean when we talk about those light switches. At this point, pause the video and have a look at the Wikipedia link that is both on the video and posted in the comment section below. I'd like you to have a look at how the modern processor has developed, particularly in terms of the transistor count. You're going to want to look at how the transistor count has gone up over time. Hopefully from that web page you've seen that modern computer processors have far, far more transistors or light switches than their older counterparts. This means that we can make more complex computer programs. Our programs can require more switches. That's great because our games become more lifelike. Our movies can be a higher definition. But it means there's, lots, uh, there's a lot more storage space required when I go file save as. When I save my application, I need a lot more space than I previously would have done. Uh, data for our application is processed within the CPU. 
Uh, it's stored in binary format, either with our, in our RAM memory or more permanently within our secondary storage, such as our hard drive. This lesson looks at, well, how much space do I need within my hard drive to store certain things? We know that a 1 or a 0 is known as a bit, and when we get 8 bits together, we call that a byte. You've probably then heard of terms such as kilobyte and megabyte. These are derivatives or collections of lots of different bytes used to store more, more complex information. At this point, I'd like you to pause the video and jump online. I'd like you to find the term terabyte, megabyte, nibble, gigabyte, kilobyte and petabyte. In each case, I'd like you to explain how many bytes go into each of them while putting them into order from uh, biggest to smallest. Then I'd like you to think about, well, how much actually is that? Because it's very easy to say a million bytes, but how many pictures is that? Or how many song files is that? Pause the video at this point. You're going to want to be looking at 15 to 20 minutes of online research into those uh, six different units of measurement. Hopefully you have found something similar to this. A bit is the smallest, that's one uh, zero or one one. A nibble is half a byte. Half a byte is important when we come to look at hexadecimal in lesson 10 of this topic. A byte, funnily enough, is one byte. That's enough to store one standard number or one standard letter. Each of the remaining ones goes up in uh, intervals of a thousand. So to get a kilobyte, I times my number of bytes by a thousand. That's about one page of writing in Microsoft Word. I times a thousand bytes by a thousand to get the megabytes, a million bytes. Uh, that's about a picture, a, a standard definition picture with about 256 different colors. If we times a megabyte by a thousand, we get a gigabyte. Gigabyte is about 114 minutes of uncompressed uh, audio recordings. If we times a gigabyte by a thousand, we're up to a terabyte and timesing that by a thousand gets us up to the biggest unit of measurement we're worried around, a petabyte. Now a petabyte is the entire internet, uh, or sorry, the entire internet is estimated to be around 1,300 petabytes as of 2016. If you're ever asked to convert between those, just remember that idea of timesing by a thousand. To get from kilobytes to megabytes, we times by a thousand. From megabytes to gigabytes, we times by a thousand again. I'm sure we're all at the point where we're wandering back to the first slide from this video. Uh, that picture is one of Google's 16 data, center ma uh, data centers, and that's estimated to store around 10,000 petabytes of data. Powering those computers uses 260 million watts of power, and that's equal to about 0.1% of all the power used on Earth. It's believed that there is enough storage space there to store every word ever spoken by every human being that's ever lived twice. To finish off this relatively short lesson, have a go at this six mark exam paper question. Explain why binary is vital for modern computers to be able to function. Consider the way computers work and the way data is input and output from the system, as well as the way it is stored within the system. Now, as part of this lesson, you really should emphasize the way the data is stored. Here is your revision guide for this lesson. If you know the answers to each of those topics in each of those sections, you are well on your way to doing well in the exam. As always, if you have any questions, please post those either on Google Classroom uh, or onto the comments section below. Thank you very much.